In this problem, we want to synthesize the carboxylic acid uh, that we have here uh, from the isalkene. So we would need, again, to always analyze the number of carbons that we have in the compound. So here I see that I have one more carbon compared to that. Um, and how can I make a carboxylic acid? So here, if you remember, uh, we can... Uh, say, remove one carbon atom and make a carboxylic acid if we perform this reaction, the ozonolysis of a terminal alkyne. So I'm going backwards analyzing where can, how can I get that carboxylic acid? So if I have a terminal alkyne and I do ozonolysis, just remember, strategy-wise, I'm going to chop that, and I'm going to get on one end. So one of the molecules that I'm getting is a carboxylic acid. Uh, so when you use a terminal alkyne, and you get carbon dioxide. So if I make an alkyne, I can get that. But how do I make that alkyne? I'm starting from an alkene. So the way we do that is creating a dihalide. So I need to add halogens here so that I can make illuminations to get an alkyne. So let's do that and make it more clear. If I have that, let's say that I make this react with bromine. And if I make that react with bromine, say that we're using unorganic solvents, which is carbon tetrachloride for that. What we're going to be doing is adding uh, bromine across that um, double bond. So let's write the structure that results in, uh, we're not doing the mechanism here, but remember that that happens through a bromonium intermediate in that the bromines are gonna be added opposite side, anti. So just to remember the mechanism on drawing that up product. And so now I have that. How do I make an alkyne so that later I can do the ozonolysis well to go from here to the alkyne, I need to perform elimination reactions. So the way we do that is we use excess of sodium amide to do, say, two consecutive E2. We can make alkynes from two ways, from either a vicinal Di um, halide, such as that, or geminal, meaning to geminal will be to bromine, for example, like that, so attached to the same carbon. And we can do uh, twice, it's two consecutive, say, E2 elimination. So if we did one elimination, and of course it is required that you have one hydrogen um, always, it is a beta elimination. Remember, we need to have a beta hydrogen so next to where the leaving group is. So in here you have two hydrogens, here you also have a hydrogen. So let's do just one of those eliminations so that we remember the mechanism. Here you have two extra hydrogens, and here you have another. So just uh, drawing all the things that we need. So that negative, remember that here you have two pairs, a long pair, that's positive. So here what we're doing is then an E2. So if I do remove that hydrogen, I'm going to use this. Um, well, that's not very fortunate. I'm going to draw the hydrogen so to keep in mind that we need the anti planar Confirmation, I want to have the hydrogen opposite size, so I'm going to have the hydrogen here. That's still a metal, right? So to make it easier, I'm going to get one of these better. But it's the same thing, so the pair of electrons here is going to make a double bond, and this is going to be the parting. So you're going to do an alkene and then uh, the alkyne in a second elimination, but it's different than that because now the alkyne, the alkene, I'm sorry, will have still a bromine, and you can do that elimination. So now you have this bromine here and an alkene, but you still have 
hydrogen here. So after another elimination, that's not throwing much. After another elimination reaction, again, with sodium amide. Again, typically we say we use sodium amide in excess. So we do this. So twice that process, and then you're going to get the alkyne that you want. One, two, and three, right? And then that compound, when you do the ozonolysis, then you're cleaving the bond here, right? And you will be forming the carboxylic acid that I have here, my target, plus carbon dioxide, which is the other product that we have. So again, doing recap, if I need to make that, and I'm counting carbons here, I have one carbon less. So one idea in making a carboxylic acid is having a terminal alkyne so that when I do ozonolysis, I um, have one less carbon and the carboxylic acid that I want, but I needed to make the alkyne. So how do I make the alkyne from that? First, I need to do the halogenation reaction to have a vicinal. This word vicinal is for this one here. Vicinal is this. So next to each other, this is geminal. All right, so geminal here. Either way, you create the alkyne, but here, when you're doing the halogenation of the double bond, you will add two bromine and opposite side, if you remember the mechanism. And what we do then after we have the dihalide to create the alkyne is to E2 reaction. So here you have an E2 force in them. It, mechanism is slightly different. But by making eliminations, then we create an E alkyne. And then by ozonolysis, we'll be creating the carboxylic acid that we want. And because it's terminal, you're also forming carbon dioxide.